Hey y'all, it's Aaron coming to you today here, and what I've got for you today is what I'm calling a Bluegrass Lead Lines Masterclass. And what this video is, is a compilation of a three-part lesson video series that I did on these extended bluegrass lead guitar ideas. I did one out of G, one out of C, and one out of D. So this will keep you from having to hunt around for the other two if you've seen one or you've seen two of them. I've got everything kind of laid out here for you today, so I'm super excited to share this with you. And hey, if you would like more of a deep dive into bluegrass flat picking guitar, I want to invite you to check out my flagship online bluegrass guitar course called Flat Picking Mastery. You can learn more about that in the video description. I've got a link down there for the course and um, this is essentially everything that I know about bluegrass flat picking guitar laid out for you in a very clear easy to follow step-by-step -step online course inside of it you're going to get access to over 90 videos with more than 11 hours of my very best flat picking instructional content and it's designed to help you develop your chops to build speed and to ultimately become fluent in the language of bluegrass flat picking guitar so again there's a link down in the video description so let's jump into the lesson okay so here's what we're going to do. Instead of me going through and showing you that whole run that I played at the beginning of the video, I want to start with a couple of smaller chunks. So here's the first one we're going to do. Okay, let me play that one again. We're going to do... Listen to this style and all that first that first little run is a very familiar sounding kind of Tony Rice passage. You know, he plays a <laughs> Billy Strings kind of has a variation on that where he does like <laughs> Alright, but again, so at the beginning. Now this is where our position shift comes in, because we're gonna play these three notes. That's the second, third, and fourth frets, but hit the second fret with your pointer finger, and then the third and the fourth frets both with your middle finger. Okay, so so far we've got. And then that puts our left hand in the position to where we can play the rest of this lick comfortably. So. So one more time on this first uh, little chunk of this run. Okay, so start there. That's just, uh, I think that's just like a little two bar phrase. And play it as slow as you need to there. One other thing that I wanted to mention before we go on here. Play it as slow as you need to. I don't care if you need to get this sucker down to 30 or 35 beats a minute. That's okay, but what you do want is you want these to be a continuous flow of 16th notes. You don't want unnecessary pauses in there. Like, you don't want it to sound like... <laughs> you get the idea. chunk there. Let's go into the next one and uh, it's going to go like this. We're going to do Alright, so that's a fun one. So let's start at the beginning here. We're going to do So at the beginning here, we'll do, and then we want to do that slide from five to seven, and then, now right here, this is where our position shift comes into play, because we're going to come back up and hit that sixth and seventh fret again, but we're going to do, hit that with your middle finger, because again, that puts our left hand in the position to play the rest of that lick. 
here, seventh fret of the third string, we're going to hit that, slide to five, three, four on the third, fifth fret on the fourth. So again, we've got. chunk out of this run here let's do um let's jump into oh one other thing that i did want to mention here as far as the the right hand the picking hand now this the the picking hand gets a lot of attention in this style of guitar playing and rightfully so because it requires more out of your picking hand than i mean just about any other style i mean maybe certain forms of metal and maybe like gypsy jazz requires as much out of your picking hand but anyway just with this um, use alternate picking as your guide on this. There's a few places in some of these where I'm throwing like two upstrokes or two downstrokes in a row, but for the most part, um, I'm just using alternate picking through this, so just keep that in mind. All right, so let's jump into the third uh, chunk of this uh, position shifting run, and it's going to go like this. We're going to do... again here we'll do so that's where our position shift comes in with the ring finger and then right here we're gonna slide from 10 up to 12 all right and then pointer finger slide from 10 to 8 and then 8 to 6 and then we'll end it so again, one more time on that third chunk here, we're going to do. Okay, so before we combine all these together, let's go through these three again here. So here's the first one. I'm sorry, the second one. And here's the third one. Okay, so let's... Let's connect the whole thing now. We're going to combine all three of those together, and then I'm going to add in a few notes at the end to just kind of round out the phrase. All right, so we're going to go like this. We'll do. Just, that's that's that first little um, passage that we played, and then we jump. Now we're into the second one. Now we're into the third one. Now kind of back to the second one. extra notes in at the end right there but um so again a big thing with this one here don't let the speed i was playing it at at the beginning of the video yo <laughs> don't worry about getting it that fast right now the the most important thing on this is to get those little position shifts again that way you can comfortably move up and down the guitar neck when you're playing bluegrass lead ideas but really the important thing is get all of those um, as a continuous stream of 16th notes you don't want unnecessary pauses 
in that. So that's the kind of the big thing to remember there. But um, all right, cool. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel here and welcome to a uh, part two to a three-part video series that I'm doing on bluegrass position shifting runs out of G, C, and D. If you haven't had the chance yet, go ahead and check out that first one that I did because I'm going to be following basically the same structure in this video that I did in the first one where I'm going to show you that entire extended run that I played at the beginning of this video, but I want to chop it down into three smaller and more easily digestible parts. And then at the end, we're going to put that whole thing together and you'll have a really nice, very authentic sounding bluegrass lead run that kind of starts with the open strings, comes all the way up to the 10th fret and comes back down again. So, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off um, with this run right here. We're going to do... pull-offs in that. So as you can see, there's a couple of places in there where I'm using like two upstrokes in a row. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of using alternate picking as my guide through this. Uh, but one more time we'll do. And here's where our position shift. shift back down and then so again we've got ah, which is just kind of a classic little bluegrass sounding run out of C okay so that's the first one here so on the second one, we're just going to kind of expand on that one just a little bit here. Let me play it for you and then we'll analyze it a bit. We're going to do... Okay, so this one starts off the same. Starts off exactly the same as the other run did. But right here, we're going to bring that pinky finger, and this is important. Make sure you do this with your pinky finger, because if not, um, it's not going to put your hand in the position to be able to play the rest of this run. So again, we've got... Now, pinky finger on this fifth fret, and we're going to slide from five up to eight. All right, and now that works out great, because now our hand is in the position to play the rest of this. Okay, so again, let's take this from the beginning. So it starts off the in the exact same way as the first run did. And then make sure you do that with your pinky. And then... Okay, so again, the first run will do... second one all right so the big one on that second one make sure when you get to that fifth fret do that slide with your pinky finger and I have to emphasize that because a lot of times when I show this to students they'll want to or sometimes they'll even want to do it with their middle they'll, they'll do that you know and then it just it just doesn't work out that way but um, anyway so that's the first two here let's jump into the third run on this and it's gonna go like this we'll do all right so again on that one um so make sure when you're going from five to seven, do that slide with your ring finger. And then we're gonna slide from seven up to nine. 
and then hit that eighth fret on the second with your middle finger. So we've got. And then. So let's actually take it from the beginning of this third run up through that point right there. Let's do. One more time. Okay, we're not done here though, uh, because now we're gonna do. Um, so a, a shift from the seventh fret down to the fifth fret, we'll do a slide there. And then we'll do a slide from five to three. Okay, so we've got. And then we're gonna end it with a little minor blues scale run. We'll do. All right. So let's run that whole one again. So we'll start off with. key position shifts in that one are so you want to make sure you do that with your ring finger and this one with your ring finger as well and then make sure you hit that 10th fret with your pinky uh, because if you try to do that with your ring finger it kind of changes the position and then we'll do do that both of those with your index and then hit that that both of those with your ring finger and then all right, so one more time on the third one there, we'll do. Okay, so before we go on, let's just kind of um, retrace our steps here. And let's go back to the beginning and let's do the first one, which is going to be... Second one, just a little variation on that first one. And then the third one we're gonna do. Okay, so now, now for the <laughs> big finish here we're going to combine all of those and that's gonna go like this we'll do that one a little bit so at the very beginning um, we're really just running it's the um, it's that second run up until that point it's literally just the uh, second um, run that we did which you know incorporates ideas from the first one but it's just that second one. But now we're going to kind of add in some ideas from the third one and we're going to do okay and then after that um i've kind of added some notes in here to round out the phrase we're going to do with our little chromatic okay so let's try that again so All right, 
So real quick, let's retrace all four of these here. So the first one... The second one... this in the first lesson for these position shifting runs in G. Um, you, you just want to make sure when you're learning these that when you're playing these ideas that it's a continuous uninterrupted flow of 16th notes which on the one hand is um, is easy to remember because there's not a lot of rhythmic variation there but on the other hand, um, it can be kind of technically difficult to execute. I just say that because I've taught these to students over the years, and sometimes they'll 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 show up, you know, the next week for for their lesson, and they've got the right notes and even the right technique, but they're putting these kind of um, they're, they're putting these pauses in there that don't need to be there. It'll be like. <laughs> notes but again practice it as slow as you need to to make sure it's just just an uninterrupted flow of very smooth sounding 16th notes that give your lead lines a very authentic bluegrass feel you know uh, you'll you'll hear you know players like you know Tony Rice and Brian Sutton and Molly Tuttle and Billy Strings playing a lot of these kinds of ideas here so all right cool <laughs> Hey friend and welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron Jackson here and welcome to um, another lesson on playing some extended bluegrass lead runs up and down the neck. This video is kind of a part three to a series that I've been doing on these extended bluegrass lead runs. If you haven't checked out the other two, be sure and check those out because I show you how to do essentially what I'm going to show you in this video but in G and in C. Today I'm going to show you how to play a bunch of these extended bluegrass lead runs out of D, which is just a great key for flat picking. I really love playing in this key. So hey, real quick, if you would like a kind of crash course as a sort of introduction to bluegrass lead flat picking guitar, um, I've got a free 45 minute video lesson complete with downloadable and printable tabs that I would love to send you. Just hit the link in the description down below and I'm gonna send that to you and we're gonna go through and talk about the essential techniques and licks and ideas and tunes and solos and all kinds of other good stuff that you'll need to lay a really solid foundation for learning this kind of guitar playing. So again, hit the link down in the description to grab that and let's jump into the lesson. So let's jump into it here and I'm gonna do this kinda of like I did the other two here and I'm going to show you that whole entire extended run that I played at the beginning of the video but I'm going to break it down into three smaller chunks that are a lot easier to learn and to get down and to get underneath your fingers and then at the end we'll combine all of those together into one monster run that takes you from the open strings up to the tenth fret and back down again so let's jump in here and let's start with this first example so we're going to do key on this one we'll do so make sure when you get to that right there that your uh, middle and ring finger because again that puts your left hand in the position to play the rest of that run and then uh, and then 
then we'll come back down. So one more time on that one we'll do. That's the first example. Let's jump into the second example here, and we're going to do... Okay, so this one starts off just like the other one did, but we're going to do... So right there, and this is really important, use your middle finger to hit both of those, to, to hit the third and fourth frets, and then we'll do... Okay, so like the last half of that run, we'll do... So we want to do that slide from 5 to 7 with the ring finger, and then slide from 5 to 3, and then 3 to 1. Okay, so this little second pattern here we'll do. Let's jump into the third idea here, and this one is going to go like this. We'll do... Um... Alright, so that one's a lot of fun. Um... So we'll start off with this little chromatic run on the fifth. And then we're going to take the pinky finger, this is really important, and we're going to slide from seven up to ten. So that's a big slide there, but you want to make sure you do that one with your pinky. Because if you don't, and you try to do that with your ring finger or your middle finger, your your hand's not going to be in the position that it needs to be to execute the rest of those notes. So again, we'll do... Okay, so we'll do... And then after that, let's take that ring finger, slide it from 9 up to 11, all right, and then we'll hit the uh, tenth fret, and then we'll do. Guess I'm doing a pull off right there. And then after that, we're gonna slide from nine to seven on the third string. Play the ninth on the fourth, and then slide from seven to five. All right, and then we'll do. All right, so we'll, again, we'll do. Um... Okay, so that's the third example there. Let's let's. Let's go through that third one one more time, the whole thing. We'll do... Um... Okay. So we're going to combine all three of these, but before we do, let me go back through here and let's play each of these three ideas one at a time. So the first one we'll do... Third one. 
let's combine all three of those together here into one monster run that starts from the open string, comes all the way up, and goes all the way back down. All right, so that's going to go like this. We're going to do... So that's just a combination of all three of those ideas that we've already done. And then I added a few notes at the end just to kind of flesh out that idea just a little bit here. So let's start again from the beginning. And we're starting off exactly the way that we kick off really the first and second ideas. Okay, so we'll do... Actually, that's note for note. Um kind of the first half of the second idea. So remember the really important thing right there is to, um, is to, when we get on the third, third and fourth fret of that third string, hit both of those with your middle finger, that way your hand's in the position. And then right here, slide from five to seven with your ring finger and we'll do. Okay, and then now we're kind of into the third idea here, and we're going to do. All right, and then I've just added a couple of notes at the very end of this just to kind of flesh out this phrase a little bit here. We're going to do. the whole thing again here and again this is uh this is um examples one through three combined all together here so we'll do Let's go over all four of these ideas here. So we've got the first one. We've got the second one. We've got the third one. got all three of those combined. tempo there again though um it's you know it's cool to to you know shoot for being able to play these runs and these licks at, at a fairly fast tempo but definitely don't worry about that first get them down and i've said this in previous videos here you want to make sure that with each of these that you've got an, a continuous and uninterrupted flow of 16th notes because we don't we don't want unnecessary pauses um, you know we don't want okay we want that to sound really nice and smooth in mind as you're going through here and learning each one of these and again just take each idea one at a time and practice that until you get it and then add the next one and then after you got all three of those then add that last one at the end to be able to you know go from the open string up to the 12th fret and back down again 